bit about ma a lathe manual and what it is and how it's used and what it comes in handy for. Uh, basically, a lathe mandrel is a uh, about a four inch long shaft. Some of them may come longer than four inches. And that shaft is smaller on one end than on the other by a couple thousandths of an inch, two or three thousandths of an inch. And the idea is that, uh, let's say you have a gear blank, a round piece of metal that you want to cut some gear, gear teeth on. Uh, well, you would take your mandrel and put the small end of the mandrel into the hole in the center of the gear and press it on tightly uh, towards the larger end of the mandrel shaft and, uh, and then put that mandrel into a lathe and turn it and cut teeth or do whatever you want to do with it. And so uh, here I'll show you what a mandrel looks like. Right there is a mandrel and that is called, this shaft is a mandrel. And that's a 3 8 inch mandrel. Now the drill bit that you see is a 3 8 inch drill bit. Now the idea then is with a 3 8 inch mandrel, you take a 3 8 inch drill bit and you drill a hole in your stock. And then you press fit the stock onto the shaft. Now here's some of the data that I took with uh, my micrometer here. Here's a 3 8 inch hole. And with a 3 8 inch hole, the uh, first of all, 3 8 inches converted to thousandths is 375 thousandths of an inch. 375 thousandths of an inch. That's why I have your hole diameter should be 375 thousandths of an inch. However, the drill, the 3 8 inch drill that I use, which is that drill, the micrometer measured that is 371 thousandths of an inch. So four thousandths under what a 3 8 inch hole should be. Now, the mandrel small end and on a mandrel, you can you can tell on some mandrels, they'll have a little plus sign. I don't know if you can see it. I haven't been able to get this thing to focus on that plus sign. But there's a little plus sign there. That means that's the larger end of the mandrel. And then over here, this is the smaller end of the mandrel. So you put your stock on here and then press it on up this way towards the larger end. Of course, you now it's a tapered shaft, so the more you push it, the more resistance you'll have and the tighter the fit will get. But you only have two thousandths of an inch from this end to this end to get a tight fit. So there's a little problem here with the, the drill. If the drill is only 371 thousandths of an inch in diameter and you need a 375 thousandths inch hole How is your stock going to fit into that hole? Now, there's a, the mandrel small end is 374 thousandths of an inch that I measured, and the mandrel, mandrel large end is 375 or 376.5 thousandths of an inch. So you only have about two and a half thousandths of an inch from the small end to the larger end. So here's the problem I encountered. Here's the mandrel, and, and I have the small end. I drilled a 3 8 inch hole into this wood. Notice how it does go into the wood, because wood kind of compresses a little bit. I've put it in here a few times and pressed it in, and so I have kind of compressed that hole to the uh, size where it'll go through. And if I push hard enough, it starts going through, as you can see. And the more I would push it, the tighter it would get. But there's a little problem. That's with wood. Now i got to get this thing out of here. Okay. Right. Okay. 
get the wood out of the way. Now let's go to the metal. Again, here's a 3 8 inch hole that I drilled in metal. Notice how the mandrel won't go in. But notice, if I get that thing to focus a little better, notice how it almost does. It almost does go in. So I'm assuming that with metal, the idea is that the 3 8 inch bit will drill the hole smaller than the small end of the mandrel, and you just kind of have to press it on with an arbor press, then force it on. And you might be able to force it on, and of course, means that it's going to be tight at the very beginning, by the time you press it out to maybe this far, it's getting pretty darn tight, all, you know, quite a bit uh, tighter than it, when it was when you first pressed it on, which is, I guess is the idea. You want it to be a good tight fit so that you can do machine work on it um, when you have this thing in the lathe. Then once you press the stock, I'll go back to the wood. Once you press the stock on there, you would take this end and put it in your lathe chuck and then turn, uh, turn the stock uh, any way you want. And uh, turn it and cut teeth in a gear blank, a round gear blank or whatever. So I thought I'd bring this up to you. And let you know some of the things that I've run into. I, for example, I'm wondering, are you really supposed to press that on? Because I watched one guy in a video. He had a gear blank when he put it onto a mandrel. But when he put it on the mandrel, just by hand, he was able to push it about this far. Then in an arbor press, he pushed it about that far to make a good tight fit. And so, I, being as I'm new to this, I got imprinted with the idea from watching that video that you're supposed to be able to just press it on here by hand. But that isn't happening here. The only way I'm going to get that to go into that metal hole is to put it in an armor press and, and from the very beginning press it in. Now this end here goes in okay because uh, this end is uh, machine smaller. And notice also that the, on the end of each one, there's a hole. And that's good, because that means uh, you can uh, take the, uh, the sharp point of your tailstock and put it in the uh, hole of the mandrel, and uh, that'll help to stabilize your work when you're working on it. But just keep that in mind, that uh, when you drill your 3 8 inch hole, you're probably going, with metal, you're probably going to have to push this on at the very beginning. I cannot get, get it to go in there. Now, one might ask, well, can't you just go to the next size drill bit? And my answer to that is I don't think so. Here's why. Let's say that you did go to another size drill bit to make it a little bit bigger. Another a drill bit size that was 1 32nd of an inch uh, more in diameter than 3 8 well, 1 32nd of an inch is 31.25 thousandths of an inch. Well, that's going to make your hole way too big to fit. Even on the, on the large end of the mandrel, you've got 376 thousandths of an inch. If you take 376 thousandths of an inch, or rather, let's say 375 thousandths, which is 3 eighths of an inch, and add 31 thousandths of an inch, that will put you at all, a little over uh, 4, 000, uh, 400 thousandths of an inch, which is way bigger than the 300 cent maximum size of the large end of the mandrel. In other words, the mandrel won't hold the stock tight. Matter of fact, the mandrel will just go all the way through the hole. So you can't go to the next size larger uh, drill bit. Even if you went to a, a next size larger drill bit of only 100, 164th of an inch, that's still 15.625 thousandths of an inch. That still will oversize your hole. So you can't go to the next size drill bit. You have to start, drill your 3 8 inch hole, and then put the small end in it 
and then press it on. With an arbor press. And then once you once you're done machining your work, you're gonna have to remove it with an arbor press also. So I just thought I'd uh, make this little video on um, mandrels, just to let you know what they are. Oh, not all mandrels are alike. Uh, for example, this one has that little plus sign. Yeah, there, you kind of see it. it's not real in focus, but it's a plus sign. But not all mandrels have that. This is a 5 16th inch mandrel. It has the 5 16 on it. It says on there, 5 six. 5 16 by 4. The 5 16 means that you would use a 5 16 inch drill bit uh, to drill your hole. And you'd, you'd probably have the same situation. Uh, you, the mandrel wouldn't fit in it unless you press it in. And then the by 4 means that it's 4 inches. It's 4 inches from here to here. Uh, this this uh, mandrel, um, I'm assuming made by a different company. It just has a 3 8 inch on there. It has the name of the company. Uh, it doesn't say how long the mandrel is. But it does designate a plus sign. But this one does not designate a plus sign uh, on either end. But notice that the printing uh, of this information is towards one end. Uh, that might mean that that's the smaller end. The, the way you know for sure is to measure the two ends with a micrometer to know which end is the small end and which end is the larger end. Because there's, when there's only two thousandths of an inch taper over a four inch length, uh, you're, it's not going to be easy to, to tell by eyeball which side is the bigger side. Okay, that, well, yeah, back to me. Okay, so that's mandrels. And hopefully this video will be of a little bit of help to you. Because um, I'm new to mandrels myself. And so uh, I haven't used them much. And uh, uh, that's why I call myself the amateur machinist. Uh, my, my level of thinking is down further. I haven't forgotten what it's like to not know this stuff. And so that's why I'm making these videos. I'm making these videos while I don't know this stuff so that I can relay it to you guys out there that don't know this stuff. <laughs> Once you become an expert on something, you, you, a lot of times you forget uh, what it was like to not know uh, something. And then you skip over all these little details that a, uh, a novice needs to know. Okay, this is Norm signing off, the amateur machinist, and I will be doing more videos in the future. Goodbye.